Watch as the water moves out from an irrigation furrow. Note that the movement outward is almost as great as that downward. This is added evidence that water movement is mainly due not to gravitation, but to the attraction of solid surfaces. As the soil becomes wetter and wetter, however, gravitation plays a stronger role. And if the soil becomes completely saturated, then gravitational forces predominate. The horizontal layer you see is coarse sand. One of the important principles of unsaturated flow is described as you witness what happens as the wetting front encounters this layer of coarse sand. The pores in the soil are many times smaller than those between sand grains. Water is held in these small pores by large adhesive and cohesive forces. The pores in the soil are like the pores in a piece of blotting paper used to soak up ink. The huge pores in the sand cannot hold water at the tensions which exist in the wetted soil above. So the water does not move readily into the sand. However, as the soil above the sand becomes very wet, the water eventually moves into the sand just as ink would drip from a blotter which is wet excessively. The sand layer thus acts something like a check valve, holding the water back until the soil becomes very wet and then letting the excess pass through. What happens to water in soil containing a sand layer is typical in principle of what happens to water in field soils where sands and gravels occur as layers in finer soil material. A great deal of agricultural land is layered in this fashion. In Washington State's Columbia Basin, there exists a quarter of a million acres of soil composed of one to two feet of a fine sandy loam overlying coarse sands and gravels. The ability of this soil to support plant growth is greatly affected by the presence of coarse sands and gravel. Because of these coarse materials, the overlying soil can retain more than double the amount of water usually held in a fine sandy loam. This is one of the best soils in the Columbia Basin.